Have you ever wondered what it takes to reach the top? Ask a Jersey girl, a four-time Olympian, captain of Team USA, with a legendary 24-year elite career as a half-mile distance runner who set world records and smashed American records and ranked in the top 10 athletes in the world for nearly a decade, someone who's been inducted into the USA Track and Field Hall of Fame and the New Jersey Hall of Fame. Ask New Jersey's own Joetta Clark Diggs. Thank you for being here. Uh, I don't want to like overbill you or anything, <laughs> okay. but oh my word. You know, we learn as as little girls never to take no for an answer when right. it comes to achieving our dreams, but that is easier said than done, isn't it? It was, especially when I grew up in the 60s, uh, being out there with a woman uh, trying to find her way. But I learned to turn those no's into slow yeses. And so my parents always said that. So, you know, as a kid, you know, people say, you can't do that, you can't do that. And I always say, give me a slow yes instead of a fast no. Um, you had a famous father, the, the principal, famous principal Joe Clark, yes. who Morgan Freeman played in the movie Lean on Me. Did having a famous parent make you feel as though you had an obligation to achieve fame yourself? Well, my father didn't become famous until I was in college. So he was just dad and mom. I had really tough, two tough, stern, loving parents. And so we weren't going to fail them. Whatever they said to do, we pretty much did. We didn't talk back then. And um, so it was a different time. And your brother was your coach. My, my brother coached me as an adult. So I was the older sister, the younger brother. And I have another sister who made the Olympic team who was 15 years younger. And I always told him to cheer for me because I took up for him when he was a little kid. Now you say in your book that you always wanted to be famous as a little girl, yeah. but you looked at magazine covers and nobody was looking like you. Right. Uh, that was kind of troubling because I didn't have a role model as a model to look at, but I figured I could be a model, but uh, they had to figure out the look that I had was a look that people wanted to see. So I didn't uh, become a model until I was 32. Uh -huh. And it was a perfect time for me because I think had I been a model when I was 16 and 17, my head would have been so big, I couldn't handle the, <laughs> the fame. But um, I think that when I see people, they're different colors. People have different looks. And the most important thing is that you realize that, but you respect people for who they are as individuals, individually and uh, what they're doing. At, uh, when you got to the University of Tennessee, you walked into, and this is unusual today, you walked into an athletic department that was run by women. That was awesome to see the athletic director being a woman pan at Summit was the basketball coach. Terry Crawford was my coach. Yeah. The sports information director was a woman. So we saw a woman in charge, women winning. And for me, that laid the platform for me going in this industry. You know, we it compressed the, our stories and, and you make it sound so easy. And it wasn't. You had two failed attempts to make the Olympic yeah. team. What did failure teach you that success can't? Well, failure taught me that you only fail if you don't get back out and try again. So I got back up and tried again, and I tweaked what I was doing. So I think people fail because they get back out there, and they do the same thing again. You can't do the same thing and expect a different result. You had a sports agent who wouldn't submit your name to, to be on a European, so yes. you, uh, in, in a meet. Yes. So you fired him. Yes, I did. And did it yourself. Did it myself. And then, and then you had a chance to be in a Nike spot or the Nike spokesperson, yes. and your agent said he wouldn't submit you, and so you fired him. I did it myself, what, yeah. <laughs> what gives you that? What is inside you that is inside everybody? I think we all are champions, and you have to define that champion. You have to develop that champion. And I think that we have the eagles and we have chickens, but champions are, are built in between the chicken and the eagle. So I wanted to, de to develop my champion in between that stage, and hopefully one day I'll be an eagle and soar. Well, you are an eagle, but you uh, run sports programs for little chickens right yes. now. For <laughs> I, all do, the kids. I do, I do, little chickens, my little chicks, I love them. For 16 years we've run a track and field camp. I'm doing one in Somerville, New Jersey, sponsored by my foundation and Johnson & Johnson, and it's a week camp, and I'm there every day with my kids, and it brings me so much joy seeing the different groups that kids get together. This book is called Principles of Success. Yes. What are your principles of success? Well, the first principle is the P's. So um, you have to have a purpose, prepare, you're patient, you get perturbed, and you persevere. And you do that in life, and you do that in sports. And then that's when you really know that you're a champion. What's the hardest thing that you've ever had to do? Jeez, hardest thing. Probably in sports, the hardest thing to do was to say goodbye. 
to the sport. I think that I wanted to, you know, still wanted to hang in there and travel and be with my friends, but the time had come. So saying goodbye to something I've been a part of for 25 years, that was hard. But the good thing about it was that I did the best I could when I was, you know, competing. And so it was hard to say goodbye, but I could say goodbye and didn't have to say, well, if I had one more time, one more chance, I could do that differently. I lay it out there on the line at all times. How do you do it? Do you find that the team uh, camaraderie that you had in sports, you, you find another team in another industry or another yeah. chapter of your life? No, those are my team. Those are my core, my core women. They're still there with me. And we just have all grown up and developed. And now that I'm in business, I still have those my core girls because they keep it real, keep us honest. They, Joetta, you know, you, you, you may think you're this, but let me tell you, I remember when. And so you need those humbling experiences to transfer into the business world. All right. Joetta Clark Jenkins, thanks for being here. Thank you.